The Ukrainian operation in the Russian Kursk and Sumy oblasts is in its second week and has overshadowed most other news of the war. Concerns exist about the causes, effects, and potential changes to the war resulting from the Ukraine operation on Russian soil. The Ukraine operation has moved the focus of the war from the east and south of Ukraine to the north, which has not seen this much military movement since the beginning of the war in the winter of 2022. The shift in the war has brought Belarus and its leader, President Alexander Lukashenko, back into the news as it shares Ukraine's northern border and is a close ally to Russia and President Vladimir Putin. The Ukraine offensive has refocused attention on this Russian ally as Belarus has issued contradictory statements about the impact of the Kursk operation on its policy in the Ukraine war. Belarus has been a passively active participant in the Russian war in Ukraine. In the early part of the war, President Lukashenko allowed Russian forces to use its territory. Russia used this territory to launch an offensive toward Kyiv, the Ukrainian capital, in February 2022, at the start of the war. Belarus had threatened to invade Ukraine, but it did not. Belarus did agree to host Russian nuclear weapons on its soil and has participated in nuclear drills with Russian troops on Belarus's territory. Belarus also allowed Russia to use its airspace for both its air force and missiles. Belarus has also supported Russia in its threats against NATO, both in conducting nuclear drills and joint exercises with Russia. It agreed to host Eagle Assault 2024 in Belarus by inviting a small contingent of troops from China's People's Liberation Army to conduct an anti-terrorist exercise five kilometers or three miles from Poland and its NATO border. The number of soldiers was small and not of military significance, but the message was clear. China could become an active military player in Europe operating along the NATO border. This week, President Lukashenko stated that Ukraine may want to expand its war against Russia and conduct military operations in Belarus. Lukashenko noted the presence of Ukrainian drones operating in Belarusian airspace, as well as increased ground activity along their common border. He stated that it would increase its presence on the common border and not tolerate any aggression on its soil. Belarusian Defense Minister Viktor Krenin stated that there was a high likelihood of a Ukrainian provocation against Belarus and that the common border remains tense. Lukashenko also added that Russia would come to its aid if invaded by Ukraine, and this would mean the opening of a once dormant front for Ukraine. Lukashenko's government has called on the European Union to state that Belarus would not tolerate any incursion of drones from Ukraine into its airspace. The absence of a Ukrainian ambassador in Belarus necessitated summoning the EU ambassador. The most serious provocation from President Lukashenko is that if Ukraine invades Belarus, it will use its Russian-deployed nuclear weapons against Ukraine. It is improbable that Russia has given Belarus launch authority, but it is another example of Moscow's nuclear saber rattling against the West. Following the series of statements made this week by Belarusian officials and its president, President Lukashenko made some unusual remarks in a yet-to-be-broadcast interview with Russian media. He asserted that NATO orchestrated the war in Ukraine to weaken both Ukraine and Russia, and that key NATO leaders actively encouraged the war's continuation to achieve this objective. President Lukashenko then added that it was time for Russia and Ukraine to negotiate an end to the war, adding that only high-ranking people of American origin wanted the war to continue its current course. He stated that Russia, Ukraine and Belarus did not need the war, and only the West did. The reason for the Ukraine operation in Sumy and Kursk is not publicly known. It is speculated that it is an attempt to get Russia to come to the peace table. The idea that Ukraine needed some military success to induce the Russians to agree to direct peace talks, which are hoped to start in November, has incensed and embarrassed them, so it is doubtful that Russia would agree to peace under the cloud of its failure to secure the border. What the operation has done is increase the cost of the war, both in terms of expanding the front, a cost Ukraine will also have to bear, and the societal cost, as it may have a significant impact on Russian support for the war. Two key Russian allies, the Chinese and now the Belarusians, are discussing the need to negotiate an end to the war. While the extent of Lukashenko's influence over Putin remains uncertain due to his lack of peer status compared to Xi Jinping or Putin himself, he has reportedly proposed a potential off-ramp to initiate negotiations. He asserted in his upcoming interview that Russia, Belarus and Ukraine do not require the ongoing war as it solely benefits the West. He stated that the West's motivation might be to support the Kursk operation and force general mobilization in Belarus and Russia with the goal to shake up society from within.
Russia adopted a partial motivation early in the war, but it proved so unpopular that they retracted it. Therefore, Lukashenko's argument is valid if the Kursk operation posed such a significant threat as to necessitate mobilization. The reason for the Kursk operation is unknown, but some speculation is possible on a plausible reason. Given his tenuous grip on power following the accusations of stealing the 2020 elections, Lukashenko appears to be averse to war, as a general mobilization would not align with his interests in maintaining power. He is close enough to President Putin to know that the operation in Kursk could lead to an extended war, which he does not want. So he is offering an off-ramp of sorts for Putin. He is portraying Ukraine, Russia and Belarus as victims of a grand Western scheme that wants the war to continue to weaken its enemies while not fighting itself. The charge at face value is ridiculous, but people who are suspicious of the West may be more than willing to accept it. This could potentially foster the narrative that Russia negotiating an end to the war would undermine the West's strategy of weakening Russia. While it may seem absurd to write this for the reader's benefit, Lukashenko's attempt to forge a shared cause among Ukraine, Russia and Belarus to end the war also seems quite absurd. Now, we need to understand the reasoning behind his statements to determine whether they are truly absurd.